So um, my name is Jared. I'm with Florida Freedivers, and we have Ryan Myers on with us today. Um, so Ryan is a multi-time, multi-time national champion, uh, spear fisherman in the nation, uh, ranked number one, and also Team USA spearfishing diver. Uh, he is also the guy who taught the Catman at Mallory Square all of his tips and tricks in the Key West, if you guys have ever seen that. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so um, we're going to just do a couple of things like question and answer uh, for Ryan and I, and then we'll open it up to you guys as well. Um, so how and, uh, and when did you get your start in the spearfishing world and competition? I think what kind of what kind of happened was actually the club Palm Beach Freedivers, which was out of you know Florida Freedivers for a while there, and um, and I started there, and that was kind of like my first introduction to competitions. I mean, it was so cool back in the day. You know, as a kid, you're always going from the shore, always going on your little john boat or whatever it was you could do to get in the water. And then I joined that club, and all of a sudden, you had like 30 people with boats that would take you every day of the week. And um, and then they had some small competitions there in the club, and then I competed in those and did well and um qualified to go to nationals and then from my first nationals here in hawaii it was kind of like where i i think i learned to spearfish pretty much and um and then yeah ever since then it's been coming back here to keep learning and and yeah awesome so, when uh so like when was the first kind of competition that you did really well at i think that it was that hawaii one you know that hawaii one it was it was only like 10th place you know but out of like 30 people but in hawaii with the kayaks and hunting these fish here that are like so completely different from anything else I had ever seen. I mean, you guys, the, I mean, we're lucky to be able to dive here every day and from shore, but the fish here are small and they are brilliant. And if you can hunt here, you can kind of hunt anywhere in the world. And I think that's kind of, kind of really showed me, you know, I, I kind of had some potential to keep going and, and do well in the com competition. And, and that's kind of how it all started was here in Hawaii. And I'm super lucky to be back here again. Cool. Is there a lot of stress out there to, from the other divers or is it just less? There's, there's a less bank. So our, basically our island that we're on is kind of like just sheer wall. So that makes it really cool for shore diving. I mean, you can access pretty much anywhere you can get to the ocean. You have great diving. You know, there's deep water right there. But everybody can do that. And there's the culture here is very spearfishing oriented, very hunting oriented. So everybody, everybody had a three prong when they were a kid, you know, and then a lot of people continued going and spearfishing, you know, with the uh, with spear guns and progressing. And then, you know, people didn't, but they, it gets a lot of pressure. I mean, I, I dove last night, la yesterday afternoon, and there were like three other sets of divers that I oh. saw like right, going in and out right where I was. So it's, wow. um, it's, it's definitely pretty common. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so I know that you are a big fan of the different gear that you're using. Um, I know that you like the flights a lot, the carbon fiber blades uh, that sure. we have as well. So I don't know if you'd be able to just touch on some of the gear you use and yeah, I actually, um, actually, I think I helped set up that whole relationship with, um, with that fin, you know, that fin was something that I was using for a while before that, that, um, that Euro style of carbon where like they, they're, they're really soft and they're designed for kind of like that European style of hunting, which I really, really enjoyed while I was over in Greece, I kind of fell in love with their equipment and then, um, was stoked to kind of, get that back with Florida free divers and that kind of pathos pocket with the flights is kind of like my world. I mean, that's, that's what I use um, all the that's time. Ex that's exactly what I have too. Yeah. It, it's, it's so great. I mean, before that, I feel like before I went to Greece, I guess I didn't really know much about the equipment from the rest of the world and just kind of used our Florida stuff and kind of like what everybody uses. And, um, and I think that was a huge progression when I started, you know, diving the way they do with the equipment that they did. Yeah, that was that was a big change. And those flights are exactly exactly that. That's what the, they're modeled after completely. Is that that Mediterranean deep, slow diving, and um, and yeah, that's how I like to hunt. So they're perfect. Cool. Talking about hunting, I guess you know what are what are some kind of spearfishing tips that you would give to you know the average person maybe to help them out become a better spearfisherman or woman. Well, I've got a couple tips for you guys. Um, they're kind of like my tips to dive better tomorrow. Like you guys can go out here, you can do this tomorrow. And, and the first one is kind of massive. And I push this one all the time. And this is like for all of you Florida people, because I, I, don't, I need to like name it like the Florida hover or something. But you guys, it's so, so common for you guys to go down there. And whether you're over a nice reef or you're over a wreck or whatever it is, and you just kind of go down and you hover. And you guys are all, I see it all the time. You're all doing this. And it doesn't take, it takes a lot more energy to hover 
and it scares a lot more fish than it does to just do that extra. You're in sink phase already. Even if you're in 50, 60 feet, just go that extra five feet to the bottom. And then when you get to the bottom, just sit there and chill. And you'll find that like when you hit the bottom, you can, you can reset and like relax again. And just kind of like you did right before you, you did your dive on the surface. Like that was like before your duck dive and you feel super relaxed and then you kind of work to get down to the bottom. You're kind of like resetting again on the bottom. And, um, and you're going to see your dive times increase massively and your fish, your fish shooting increase massively. I mean, you scare everything away as you're going down and then you sit and you wait and everything comes right back to you. And you end up with much higher percentage shots, a fish that's approaching you and then turns versus a fish that you're chasing away as you do the fall. So you're a big um, fan of uh, Espeto. I'm a massive fan of the Espeto technique. It's, it can be used anywhere in the world. And I, I think that's the single biggest change I made to my diving that, that completely changed everything. I mean, it really did. Um, so yeah, the Florida, I, I see it worse in Florida than anywhere because you have so many fish that you can get away with it. You know, you can go down, you can hover over a wreck and you can shoot a grouper and you can shoot up African pompano and these cobia and all this stuff fairly easily without going to the bottom. And I think that's why you kind of, you never, you never progress to that next step, you know, but you'll see that if, if I'm diving down and I see a grouper, or I see some muttons or I see whatever's around on a wreck or on a reef in Florida, I'll just go straight to the bottom. And those fish will always come back and you end up with a much better shot, you know, and maybe the fish you saw, you saw on your way down was not the best fish of that group. And then when you land on the bottom, you see that fish that you would have shot. And because you didn't, you see the bigger one that's coming in from behind him or the other more highly sought after species. So, um, so the Espeto technique is, is number one. You can do that tomorrow. doesn't matter whether you're in 30 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet. Just go to the bottom. I promise you, you'll dive times to be more. You'll shoot more fish. Um, second one is to slow down. I mean, that's another massive one um, for beginners, for people of all, all kind of levels, is to slow down both on the surface, in the middle of your dive, and then on the bottom. You know, it's, I spend a lot of time on the surface. If I don't need to, if there's nothing like I need to dive on right now, if I'm not seeing a fish down there, if I'm not drifting in a current where I'm going to miss the spot, I take my time on the surface. I want to be able to do a two and a half minute dive if I, if I want to, you know, if I'm down there and, and maybe I need to wait a little bit longer on that mutton or that African pompano or that moo or wherever I am in the world, I want to be able to have that time. And I, the only way to have that extra time is to plan ahead and do it on the surface. And, um, and that slow down, that slowing down applies to on your drop too. I mean, I tend to go really slow on the way down. I, I'm not in a rush to get there. What I want is when I get there, the fish that are there to not be afraid. I want, I want them to be super relaxed and be willing to come right back over to me as I, as I wait and attract them. And then on the bottom, the same exact thing. When I'm down there, I'm doing my absolute best to, if I'm, if I'm turning my head, it looks like that. You know, if I'm, if I'm turning my body, it's like, no rigid, it's, fast it, movements. It, it is slow motion in every single thing I do. When that gun turns, it is a, it, it's nothing. You'll never hear my bands, you know, rattle in the water. You'll never hear it. You'll never see any of that. Like, it's, it's the slowest thing ever. Because those fish, if you attract the fish to you, they're attracted to you. They don't want to leave. They don't want to leave until you scare them away. You know, so if you have the time on the bottom, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no rush to get that gun over there. He's not going to go anywhere. You know, if you've done everything proper up to that point. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my two big ones to slow down. And then I guess my third one is what I kind of call farther and deeper. And that's that like, I will always run the boat a little farther. I will always drive the car a little farther. I was always hike down the cliff a little farther. And I'd much rather spend an extra 30 minutes in the car, on the boat, on the trail, than I would diving a less, an inferior spot and gotten there quicker. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. I dive all over the world and I'm 90% of the time. I have no idea where I am. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know where the reef is. I don't know where the fish are. And the easiest way to look at a map or to find those fish is just to go a little further. Like wherever your, your nearest point is, however the, the closest access point is, just go a little further away. And then on that same note is just go a little deeper. If you go a little farther and go a little deeper, no matter where you are in the world, you'll always find fish. It's, it's, it's one of my tricks I use anywhere. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm always at a new spot. I'm never in my backyard. I don't have a backyard. So it's always like a new game. And um, and those kind of three things, you guys can go out there. You can do that tomorrow. And I guarantee you'll shoot more fish. Gotcha. So um, let me open it up. There's some questions that have been coming in. Let me go back here so I can Sweet. get to some of them here. Uh, let's see. 
Yep, flight spy for free divers are what we're talking about. Uh, do you recommend penetrative fin? We're talking about the flights from Florida free divers. That's what we're talking about for those fins. Uh, where are you from, Ryan? I'm from Palm Beach. From Palm Beach, grew up in like Palm City, Stewart, but I've been diving that area my whole life, all up and down the coast of Florida, West Coast, all of it. Uh, Fred should... Brun, what about grunting? I'm a big grunter. I like to grunt a lot. <laughs> um, for sure. I go to the bottom. It's almost, it's, it, almost every single time I get to the bottom, I do my dusting like that, not like that. You know, just a nice subtle dusting, and I throw some grunts out there, unless there's sharks around. So be careful in Florida because those bull sharks will eat you. <laughs> they bull sharks uh, like the grunting too yeah definitely um curly so can you give us some examples of breathing techniques we did that last week if you go check out the youtube that will be up uh fairly shortly but that was a previous session we have um let's see you should come to jamaica so uh um, spearfishing jamaica you should come to jamaica ryan sounds good uh king how do you do a breathe up again just see the last section that we had with some of the breathing and relaxation uh here we go so curly what should i do if i'm all suited up head to toe oh that's a funny question there <laughs> uh do you swim back and take your suit off or you chum the water if you have to go to the bathroom um i aqua poo uh, <laughs> I, I don't enjoy it but i i i've been known to do it yeah not <laughs> uh so shallow Just water blackout prevention swim backwards forward. Best thing you can do is take a course. That's, I mean, I think Ryan would agree with that. You've been through some courses yourself, uh, but sure. safety and stuff with courses is definitely huge. Uh, exhale outdoors. I've heard Ryan grunting in his sleep. I've been known to grunt <laughs> in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, we could talk a little bit about that. Um, that shallow water prevention a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of kind of like you're your own best buddy. You know, you're 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 their biggest prevention of. Um, of blacking out, you know, that's, that's, you're the only one that knows your limits. And I like to, I like to really be conservative when, when you need to be, and also like be able to push it when you, when you have that, that, that safety level. And I think like when you're out here in Florida and you've got the big current and the dirty water and the wrecks, like you've got to knock 20, 30 seconds off your bottom times. You know, there's no way you're diving with a real gun, your buddy's going to see you if you black out. You know, when you're out here in Hawaii, you got crystal clear water, or you're in Palm Beach, and there's no fish around, like there always is, like there never is. And, um, and you've got 80 foot of his, like, tell your buddy, be like, yo, watch me really close. I'm going to go down, I'm going to push it. And that's how you get better. You get better by those days of pushing it. But you've got to have everything kind of in line for those days. You know, to, it's really important to kind of have those separate modes not die when you black out i mean the blackout is not the worst thing in the world as long as you do it in a controlled environment you know on the line in the crystal clear water with a buddy that's pro that you trust always with the buddy yeah uh do you hunt kala in hawaii and how i don't i don't hunt the kalas um i see them a lot but um again they love the espeto technique go to the bottom chill they'll all come over to you i see them in all my videos they're always big giant unicorn kalas and opala kalas all up in my face but um uh, best tips to spear uku. Uh, is it uku? U K U, U K U. Um, yeah, uku is U K U. Was it uhu or U uku? It says U. Yeah, U K U. Okay. Best um, uku again, dusting and grunting. I like to go a little deeper for my uku. I see them in the forty to sixty foot range, but like I just saw. Oh, so yesterday, uh, last, yesterday afternoon, we were actually out, and that was the target. There were there were uku all over the place, and I did not shoot one. I tried. I tried. I tried. Um, they're not always, I was in a really popular spot. Like I said, there were three other sets of divers that got in and out while I was there. So if I would have gone further, gotten further off the beaten path, I guarantee that we would have found bigger, dumber Uku. So that's, that's a huge one, but going to the bottom and doing that dusting and that grunting, Uku love it. They absolutely love it. Cool. And then tips on shooting Uhu, I guess, spiritfish. So, yeah. So Uhu <laughs> are, um, Uhu are the big, big parrots we have out here. And I know a lot of the world, like Florida, they're considered an ornamental, so we don't shoot them at all. But out here in Hawaii, they're, they're a delicacy. Everybody, most people eat them. Um, and there's two techniques for the uhu. There's, again, I see giant dumb ones when I go places where there are no people. You know, if I get to dive green sands or the north side of the island or some of these remote spots by boat, they're everywhere in your face. But when you're in the popular spots, we do what we call like a dive bomb. And I just made a video on that on my, on my YouTube. But it's basically like a real gentle, slowing dropping down on top of them. And it's so much more than like what I was talking about earlier, which is just going down and swimming around and looking for fish. 
it is a dive bomb. You're coming down on top of them and you're really slow and you're trying to make yourself as small as possible and, um, and you're taking that shot from above. And a lot of times you can get the uhu like that. Yeah, I love that tip that you had too in that recent YouTube of the whole streamlining. Uh, For sure, it's everything. Yeah. Uh, Brady Carney, uh, any suggestions to avoid a sinus pinch? Uh, big thing in that, yeah, they go over the same thing in courses with that, with the equalization as well. Um, get a course or ask your previous instructor. I'm sure they can help you with that. Uh, should beginners start on a three prong or a sling? I'm big fans of the three prong. Um, really big fans of it. I I I started off with it. A lot of the the good people I know started off with it. Um, it's go out there, whack a lot of small fish, lose them, miss them. It's gonna happen all day long, and you'll get a lot more opportunities at kind of learning that fish behavior, learning how that little fish reacts to you. And they're all the same. All these fish are the same, whether they're two inches big or, or 50 inches big. Um, the way you approach it, how slow you are, the way you maneuver around that fish is the same. So the, they're great. They're great tools to start off with. I, I highly recommend it. For sure. I don't think I was allowed to even get a regular spear gun until I was maybe 12. So For sure. I think uh, no. From five to 12, it was just a you know, little yeah. three prong. That was it. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So this is kind of a two part question. It's how do you make yourself more calm in the water and improve your breath hold? Uh, because right now I am taking 40 foot drops and by breath hold is like 40 seconds to a minute. How do I improve my breath hold? I think biggest thing would be uh course, you know, further your training and all that, but maybe sort of the first part of it, how would you make yourself more calm in the water? You kind of touched on that with slow already, way down. Right. Slow, slow way down. Degrees. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So tips to dive deeper, same thing, course, slow down, um, a sling versus spear in less than 30 feet of water. Um, it, it depends what sling you're talking about. You're talking about like a pole spear sling, you know, um, I, or a Hawaiian sling versus like a pole spear or a sling versus a gun. I don't know. It depends on where you are. You know, it really does. I mean, I'm a big fan of like for Florida, um, would be like your three prong, you know, would be your small pole spear to start with. Um, and it, it depends. I mean, in the Bahamas, again, probably a, a, th a three prong or a pole spear would be a, a great beginner, you know, tool over there too. Uh, in the Bahamas, are you a sling guy or a pole spear guy? I'm both. Um, I, I, if I want to have fun, I would say if I want to have fun, I shoot the sling free shaft. If I want to land fish, I shoot the pole spear for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. So it depends how hungry I am and, and what I want, but um, gotcha. anything deeper than like 80, 90 feet, I use the belt reel and the pole spear. Um, cool. Um, Carter Gerdak, how long can you hold your breath? I did six minutes, like five years ago. Don't want to do it again. <laughs> don't, I don't do it anymore. I'm in the same boat. Same boat. Yeah. Uh, Nick Bailey, tips for diving straighter. I've been curving in way too much and been over, for overcorrecting. Yeah. I think that's head position and your water entry, honestly. Um, I credit FI with like having the best water entry that I've ever seen myself. That's, that's me complimenting myself. But, but really, like we, when I went through the instructor course with them, like you better have a perfect, beautiful entry or, you know, they'll throw you out. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I did it in the, I did a, the, um, the Jupiter bridge right there. So Nick, go to your Jupiter bridge there, do a thousand duck dives because that's what I did with Chris Landers and they're, they're perfect now. But that's, that's going to be why you're curving, your head position and your, your entry, you're overextending and they're flipping and going back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nolan Smith, do you enjoy diving in Fort Bragg, California, or was it too cold? No, no, it was not fun. It was so cold. <laughs> it was so cold. cold. It was in a kayak. I was, no, I don't ever need to go back there. <laughs> I won, I won the national championships there in Fort Bragg, um, yeah. which was cool, but it was, it was way too cold. I'm not That's a cold awesome. fan. Yeah. yeah, neither am I. That's uh, yeah. being from here. I think we're kind of spoiled and going anywhere we are. else. It's automatically cold. For sure. Uh, when is the new video coming out? The new video is coming tomorrow, Sam. Yeah. New video is coming tomorrow. We're going to catch and cook the moo that I shot yesterday. And we're going to show you setting up my new aquarium right there. We're, uh, we're pretty excited. Sam is actually looking up tonight's recipe right now. Nice. Uh, when the Ulu... Catch Alua. Alua, there you go. Yeah. Cannon. This is my buddy Cannon. He's always asking about the Alua. The Alua is coming <laughs> as soon. Justin Justin's family. I try I've been trying to stay away from Justin's family. Um, you know, he's got some older parents and uh and you know, we're all trying to social distance and whatever, and my Alua is in his freezer and the smoker and the grinder uh, and everything oh, is at his house. But that footage is unbelievable and it's coming soonish, I hope. Gotcha. 
Uh, I guess we'll wait for some of the people they want to send in some more questions. So what yeah. uh, what kind of diving do you most like out there in Hawaii? Like what's your favorite kind of target fish to go after you personally? Um, you know, I really enjoy the ukus. I really enjoy the ukus to eat. I really like the goats. Um, you know, I really like the reef diving. I guess it's more than like, which it's more wait, wait, reef wait, diving. So you have to explain the goats. Like not a, you're not, not targeting not a, goat, a regular goat. goat right? Yeah. So they're like these silly little like two pound fish that you in Florida would all like laugh at. Um, I did when I came here, I was like, what is that? Like, I didn't even know what it was for like the first six months I was here. Um, but yeah, the, the reef fish here are super enjoyable. I really enjoy the challenge of, of hunting them and, and learning. I mean, there's so much to learn out here. I mean, I see some of my buddies dive and the way that they, the way that they approach a spot is they're not like looking for fish. They're looking for like hiding spots. They're actually like looking for little like ledges that overhang and they'll go down and they'll tuck in, they'll poke their head out and then they'll hide back and it's all like this game of like making these fish curious and it's um it's it's so so much different than like florida and just going around and looking for fish and then swimming down and shooting them you know sure. it's, it's it's much more how much longer are you going to be in hawaii i don't know um it, it depends um when i'm youtube famous and have lots of money i'll go back to traveling the world and making youtube videos <laughs> i don't but, think it's uh, horrible to uh, be stuck there right now it it we are so so lucky to be stuck in the best place in the world right now. I mean, I I think the last five six years we did like thirty countries, me and Sam, and I always joke that Hawaii is my favorite country. Like there, I've been I've been to a couple of them, and and Hawaii Hawaii is the best. You know, so I'm super lucky. Uh, J Rod eighty eight. So how big is the tank? Is there a reason why you went with a smaller aquarium? Normally, when you buy a small tank, you need to buy a bigger one ASAP. For sure. Yeah. No, I found it at the dump. <laughs> um, <laughs> I went I went to the dump and um take the trash and I was like that is my new aquarium sitting there on the side of the road. It was like a twenty gallon, it was perfect. So we're excited. We have twenty six dollars invested in it right now and that's that's about as high as we're gonna go. So. Uh Bash H V H favorite way to hunt D D T T T Um D T T. I don't know what a D T T is. <laughs> do yeah. I do I miss Bull Shark Barge? No. No, I don't, Skyler Blair. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't miss. You talking about like the Rankin? No, Bull Shark Barge would be like directly south between like the Jupiter and St. Lucie Inlet. It's super shallow. Everybody gets their baits there. It's called Bull Shark Barge for a reason. It's similar to Sam Powell, but it's not there. It's 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 south. It's it's right in between. Oh, Doctor Tuna's DTT. Um, Sam just said that. But yeah, no, I don't miss the the area from, I guess like Stewart to Jupiter. I have nightmares of like I have I still have nightmares of and I don't I no I, I feel so fortunate to have not have to have that as like my backyard like, it was a beautiful place to grow up back in the day and it was great fish there's wonderful fishing there but I have nightmares of the sharks no, I so, think it's even gotten worse too over the I'm, years I guarantee it's gotten worse I mean the more yeah. people it, it's yeah I, I don't miss it no I don't know do circle tuna. back yeah to those yeah what was that um Favorite way to hunt dog to tuna? Okay, so I love the dog to tuna for a couple of reasons. My number one is that it I hate blue water diving. Like I just I'm not the kind of guy that can sit out there and chum all day and and wait. Um I have no patience for that. So the dog to tuna, I can blue water hunt on the edge of the reef and also dive deep. So I can be I can have my kind of medium to big size gun, swim down, lay on the reef, do my espeto techniques in a hundred, hundred, whatever, right on the edge of those corners, those big drop offs. I can look for doggies first and then I can shoot the grouper next to me. And that's my favorite. I don't do a lot of chumming. I don't do a lot of flashing. Um, I really enjoy hunting fish in kind of like their natural environment without kind of altering it. You know, when you do a lot of chumming, you're shooting at a fish that's coming up, it's eating off chum. It's just, it's a different like hunting experience, like shooting a pig off a feeder, you know, versus going out sure. and like cre creeping after this pig for three days. It's just, it's a totally different thing. So, um, so yeah, I don't use a lot of chum, don't use a lot of flasher. I go out and I hunt in areas where they should be and I hunt really well and I dive deep and, and you see what kind of approaches you. Yeah. you know? so what is the point of a neck weight? Um, I would probably resort back to an instructor or something like that. It's more of a competitive or kind of free diving I, aspect. I really like a neck weight. You know, I put a neck weight on Hawaii six years ago and I never took it off. I've, I haven't done a single dive in my life without this neck weight. I think again, back to Nick Bailey's question, I credit the neck weight with helping me effortlessly go straight up and down too. Um, I think it helps with that. It takes a couple pounds off of my belt, so it moves it up a little bit. Right. I like it. I'm a big fan.
I think the big thing with that is just make sure that you have at least 50% of your weight still on your belt. So that in case of emergency, sure. you can dump it. So don't put all the weight on your neck. The two times I dropped my weight belt, I wish I could have dropped my neck weight at the same time. <laughs> so it was definitely like, damn, like, do I go up and get it or do I just leave it? You know, so yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, you ever plan on going to any of the other Hawaiian islands? Yes. Um, I really, really want to. I've actually never been to any of the other. I, I, Maui when I was a kid with the family. But, um, you know, I've only been to the airport in Oahu like a million times and that's it. So I never, I, I really want to start exploring the other islands, but we just always come to Kona, you know, it's, it's, we usually, uh, we usually just stop and buy. So, um, so yeah. Are the chubs you caught in the same species we get in Florida? I believe so. Yeah. So go guys, make some chub poke back in Florida. Send me your video. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, for a beginner for a beginner diver, where do you recommend in Jupiter to dive? Um, Hope Sound. So go to Hope Sound, cross Beach Road, drive left to Hope Sound National Wildlife Refuge, hike along the beach pretty far, like until you're tired. Then get in the water. That's where I grew up diving. Um, great fish out there. You got to be careful that you're on the outside edge of Pex Lake because that is the edge of Pex Lake. But a lot of that same reef carries over into Hope Sound. And there's great 20, 30 foot shallow diving. There's great lobster in there. You dive to Fort Pierce, Pepper Park, Bathtub Reef, all great um, shallow shore dive spots. Cool. Uh, what's your favorite setup for blue water? Um, no setup reefs. <laughs> I, I, uh, I just did a blue water trip the other day. I brought my 120 Rob Allen single roller and a belt reel. So I had two reels set up. I got a nice Wahoo with it. If I would have saw a big tune, I would have been screwed. But, you know, I shot three Uku and instead of you know and you kind of give up the big gun to have a little bit more flexibility on the reef it's kind of always been my philosophy i'd rather be light and light and free on the reef than um than big and heavy on the reef and you know bigger for the blue water true have you seen any sharks yet in hawaii yes every day, every day. <laughs> yeah there, there's always sharks here um for sure yeah, yesterday i was on the bottom i was uh, on one of the pipes we call them which is like the otec pipes and sitting there, dusting, grunting, looking at, um, looking at some omilus, which are like these jacks in my face. And I had a big giant trevally coming in, and I was going to grunt at him for the camera. I wasn't going to shoot this one. But I grunted at him, and he comes straight from my head. And then he turned and flew away. And I was like, what, what just happened? And the shark came right over my head. The Ooh. sharks love the grunting, too. Um, they're, they're, so be careful with it. Pretty much worldwide? Pretty much worldwide, but wherever there are, you know, more sharks is so like, I, I don't grunt a lot in Florida, you know, any of that, any of that coast right there, I don't do it. Um, and I'm careful out here if it's sunset, you know, if I'm in a known sharky kind of area, I'll, I'll be much more careful with it. Um, for Nick Bailey, back to earlier, my dad says I start going straight with my entry, then start curving later. Any tip for that? I think you kind of touched on that with head position. Yeah, it's, def it's head position, you know, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, you're diving with your arms down. Another, another great, like, a lot of people tend to go too slow. I mean, go too, go too fast. So when you're going too fast and you're going down, you can kind of plane off in any direction. If you let the water pull you down, you know, like when I'm pulling from my neck, like it, it's just, I'm, I'm, I, my descents are so slow. And, um, and I, I credit that neck weight with it, with pulling me down through the water versus pushing with my fins and then going off at different ends. Sure. Any plans to uh, guide and organize any spirit charter trips in the future? Um, I don't know. It's, um, you know, it's definitely going to, the, the guiding is definitely not going to go away. I, um, you know, I don't necessarily want to spend my life taking people spearfishing around the world. I'd rather just go spearfishing around the world. So, um, right. so that's kind of what we're working on now. Go subscribe to my YouTube sports channel. What was the most expensive thing you lost while diving? <sighs> I don't know. I'm pretty damn, oh, definitely the, the pole spear. I'm, I'm pretty good about not losing stuff. I lost a lot of guns, but I always seem to get them back. Um, That's I impressive. Lost spirit. Mm. Yeah, I, I lost one in my, my favorite 120 Rob Allen. It was like my first spear gun. I lost it for like three weeks in Florida. It came back. Oh. But, um, but yeah, I cool. lost a big pole spear in the Bahamas on a 164-foot hog. Some of you guys might have seen belt reel, um, belt, weight belt, everything. Had to drop the whole thing. So. What island are you on? I'm on Big Island, so the Kona side. Uh, let's see. Do you ever plan to come to French Polynesia? Yeah, it's expensive. I would love to, for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, one of the big reasons to come over here to, to kind of hang in Hawaii now, 
and maybe live here, maybe set up a base, whatever, is to get access to a lot of those South Pacific islands. You know, I've kind of been based out of Florida for so long and I've, I've kind of done a lot of the Caribbean and I've done a lot of um, South America and Central America. And I really want to go the other way. You know, I want to go, I'm now like 12 hours closer to, um, to all the South Pacific, Indonesia, all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping to really get over there. Sure. Uh, cool. It's 6.30. I really appreciate you, uh, you joining up with us and giving Sweet. us quick tips and tricks. Uh, just so everyone else knows, too, upcoming, we have the next two sessions. So next week, we're going to have Ali Penovich. So she's a team Sweet. diver, competitive free diver, world record spearfishing woman. Uh, and then after that, we are planning on a lot of people's questions. So uh, Ted Hardy is going to come on and talk about equalization. So he's pretty Sweet. much equalization guru everyone knows uh he's also a former team usa freediving captain and uh he is also a former competitive freediver so got some cool stuff coming up for you this also will be uploaded to the youtube channel so you can submit some more questions onto there as well for ryan or anyone else in the florida freedivers team uh thanks again ryan for lending us your time and sweet have fun no, in awesome. hawaii everyone's jealous i'm sure <laughs> they are <laughs> thanks so much guys uh, cool. we'll see you next time well, see you later on. Thanks, man. Bye. Bye.